Hi everyone, welcome back to another Blender Community Roundup. This is where we take a look at interesting things happening in and around the Blender community. Today we have a selection of free things you can download, so new add-ons and geometry nodes type tools. We of course have some new tutorials and some channels I want to recommend, as well as a couple of inspiring projects. Before we get into it, if I sound a little bit groggy during this video, it's because I'm getting over a cold, but uh, it won't stop me from sharing cool stuff with you. So yeah, first of all, let's take a look over at Southern Shotty's channel. So recently, Mr. Shotty released a free add-on for helping you get stop motion animation effects in Blender. If you're familiar with their content and their art style they do quite a lot of this like lots of kind of cutesy stylized stuff and stop motion is an animation style that they've been experimenting with quite a lot so in their explorations in blender they decided that making this add-on which you can notice here with the uh, stop mo panel uh, would be a great benefit to their workflow and it would save a lot of time it's actually relatively simple in what it does it applies a modifier to the f curves of the animation but generously they figured since it would save them so much time they'd make it available to you as well so you can get it for free on blender market they have a page for it let's just take a look at this the stop mo add-on so stop motion in one click it's free freely available of course and if you want to give a little donation you can which I highly recommend you know if you have the money available for it so on the store page you'll get a quick rundown of the features but the best way to learn about it is from the announcement video where you'll get a quick rundown of the parameters how the buttons work how to use it it's quite simple you basically just select the animation rig you want to apply the effect to and then press apply steps you also have controls over the step amount so you can effectively decide how much of a frame gap you want to leave in between but of course keep in mind that if you have like highly complex animations if you're applying the step animation you may lose some information but if you're doing stop motion animation animations and you're probably aware of that already. One thing I thought that was pretty interesting about this is that it doesn't just let you apply the stop motion effect to physical animations like mesh animations. It also lets you apply it to textures and that's something that could be quite easily overlooked. Essentially if you have a mapping node in your shader editor and you press the add animation button it will keyframe the z value on the rotation and what this can help you do is effectively get a change in the texture on the surface of the object. So if you're familiar with stop motion animations they're usually made of like clay materials, plasticine, things like that but obviously as the artist changes them in between a frame it may leave some extra fingerprints or change the look of the surface, so this is a way to simulate that effect. A couple of other notes as well, one of the reasons it's free is because they're not really intending to provide support for the add-ons, so if you have a problem with it, you're on your own, I think that's fine. Support takes a lot of time and it is unpaid work for, you know, free products. And also speaking as someone who has products and provides support, the answers to 90% of support requests can already be found on Google, so, you know, try not to pester him if you have a problem with the add-on. And Southern Shot is also made clear that if you make changes to the add-on, that's fine because it's GPL licensed, but they would be interested in hearing about the changes you made, you know, in case they're useful for the future. So I just want to make a note about simulation nodes. So simulation nodes has been merged into 3.6. This was a little while ago. Jack Sluke put a post on Twitter informing people about it. And when we're talking about simulation nodes, we're actually talking about simulation zones. As we can see here on Aaron Dell's tutorial, reaction diffusion with simulation nodes Blender 3.6. This is a great one because the effect can have some really great visual complexity, but it's actually quite simple in principle. Reaction diffusion is this effect that you'll find all the way through nature. It's essentially just a side effect of basic physical laws. So if you have been hearing a bit about simulation nodes and you want to like find a good place to start, learning about it, especially because it's going to become stably available pretty soon with the release of 3.6, that I can give you this recommendation of a video. Of course, Arendelle has a lot of experience teaching geometry nodes. I also have a course available, which I have recommended before, and that still gets my recommendation. If you want like some more curated, dedicated content you can follow, then I recommend taking a look at their course on Canopy Games. But man, talking about simulation nodes, a lot of stuff has been happening in the community. If you head on over to Twitter and just type in the hashtag simulation nodes, you get a bunch of really interesting things. A lot of people have been picking up on it, especially the 80 level public application. We've got all kinds of like parametric mesh effects, water simulations, very rudimentary machine learning stuff. It's definitely worth its own video, so maybe I'll take a look at doing that sometime soon. But yeah, just letting you know that Simulation Nodes is about to become Blender mainstream, so now is probably a good time to pick up the baton and start learning about it. Thank you, Erin, for the tutorial. So a channel I bumped into recently, which I actually quite like and I hadn't really seen before, is All Mission. So this creator focuses mostly on product visualization and design. I know we do have quite a strong subset in the community for that, especially those of you that like Derek Elliott type content, but there's lots of little details in here I think you'll appreciate. So let's take a look at the Make Professional Product Labels Blender tutorial. So here they're going to give you a tip about embossed text on a surface. This is something that's quite easy to overlook when you're doing product viz, but it makes a really big difference because it kind of adds to that premium quality look of a printed surface. So it goes over like different types of textures you can use, um, how to blur textures and combine it with normal data to try and get like an embossed look. And the second tip is something I have bumped into before, like as a problem. When you have metallic type surfaces, you may notice that the camera view you have to display your artwork doesn't necessarily do the material justice. As you can see here, this metallic material is just like black, essentially. There's not much information about the surface being conveyed. So you might rotate the camera around to find a better angle where the light is bouncing off that surface where it actually looks good. But then you'll find that 
that like the composition of the scene doesn't really look as good from that angle. So what's the solution to this? Well, all mission will give you a little tip here about having a separate independent light object, which you can move around to adjust to the camera view so you can control having this extra source of light bouncing off the surface. It's a neat little tip. I think these kind of small details and the design process make a big impact on creating nice product renders. So of course, like I said, that's not the only thing they do. There are lots of other good tips kind of packaged away in here. Pretty helpful tips for animation. They've added a new tutorial since I made notes on the channel, how to like glass, but in a tutorial, I'm sure lots of people will like that. Glass is quite a tricky thing to get right in 3D software. See so yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, then it might be worth checking out. Okay, the next channel I've stumbled on recently is Brandon's Drawings. So they do a lot of these micro tip videos, which are essentially lots of little small quick tips for Blender. So very consumable, about half a minute long, each of them. It reminds me a little bit of the Blender Secrets channel, which again, we've spoken about before, an excellent resource for you know, very consumable doses of Blender, which are great to add to your sub feed, especially if you're in the middle of your learning process in Blender. So I want to show this channel to you because this is just like another good tip resource you can add to your feed. But that's not the only thing they do. They've got some like add on reviews and some longer explanation videos. I like the thumbnails as well. You kind of get like all the information you need about the video in there. So yeah, I thought we might find this useful. Okay, so moving on, we have Sabrina Garcia, who's an amazing artist. And we're not actually going to focus on the YouTube channel. We're going to take a look at their Twitter feed, but I'm just going to leave this here for now to show you that they do have a YouTube channel if you want to check out their previous content. But they picked up quite a bit of attention recently with this Mecha Cannon animation. It does have sound as well that you can listen to if you go and uh, check out the original post. But the quality was amazing. Lovely hard surface modeling here. I think the textures might have been done in Substance, but I'm not too sure they've used Substance on some other parts of their Mecha Kitty project, which I'll show you. But yeah, this was just like a very satisfying post. And I like sharing some of these Blender results with you because it just goes to show like the kind of quality you can get from the software. Uh, so another reason I like their feed is not just because the artwork is very satisfying to look at. I love all this kind of rugged sci-fi stuff, but also because Sabrina likes to share some of these viewport clips as well. And this is what I love, like seeing the denoising resolve, because I oftentimes wonder when looking at these really high quality artworks, what does this look like in the viewport? How does this behave? How does the software hold up? And this to me is sometimes like more impressive than the actual final results, like seeing this cycle semi real time rendering. I don't know. I really like it. So stuff like this for the feed is just always nice. Here you go. Love me some grimy, grungy texturing substance painter. It looks like they've also been using the new hair tools as well, which we've done a video about for the Mecha Kitty. So yeah, in terms of inspiration, definitely worth following along with. I will say as well, when I make notes for creators on these videos, you'll find that I'm not subscribed to them or I'm not following them. Sometimes it's because like on the YouTube I'm signed out, but on the Twitter, I don't have an excuse. So here we go. Sometimes I make notes and I actually forget to follow the person, but also maybe you've encountered this as well. Like sometimes you'll find people on your Twitter feed that are there all the time. So you think you followed them, but then you go and check the account and you haven't been following them. It's just because the algorithm just keeps recommending them to you. But anyway, I digress. Lovely content, Sabrina. Keep it up. Okay, so everyone loves having easier ways to do things in Blender. And one aspect of Blender where there's a lot of room for improvement is modeling. Now, Blender already has a really fantastic modeling tool set, especially with the addition of you know, add-ons like Mesh Machine that add some like really fundamental low-level functionality in terms of like editing polygonal structures. But if you've been following for a while, you know, I've done some videos talking about some of the more esoteric methods, the lesser known methods that are extremely powerful, but are maybe just a bit finicky to work with because they're underdeveloped, like using metaballs. And I've shown like some content from Emiliano Colantoni, who's done some really fantastic results with this. So metaballs are like a voxelized method for being able to have mesh shapes join and automatically deal with the transitions. Um, so another method is using SDF modeling, sine distance field modeling, which is more of a mathematical approach. Again, similar in its way that it will deal with transitions for you automatically. And it's also very non-destructive in the way that all of the object shapes you're using are kind of calculated one after the other to get the representation of the shape. Now, when we compare different 3D softwares like Blender, Maya, 3ds Max to like CAD software, which is also very mathematically based in its representation of meshes, e.g. NURBS, dealing with a mathematical expression of curves rather than like finite polygonal points, but it depends on the method and the software. You can see that there are actually a lot of benefits to non-polygonal methods of modeling. Anyway, where am I going with this? Recently, someone's been developing an SDF add-on for Blender, and that person is someone whose name I'm going to butcher. You know how bad I am with names. Joao, is that how you pronounce it? Desega, Desega, Desega. I'm really bad with names, I apologize. Now I stumbled on this video by, I've got another weird name, Gioxia. I'm going to call them G and J, okay? Is that all right? So I stumbled on this video by G, kind of showing some of the demonstrations here of the add-on. And this is a really good representation to show like how transitions are handled automatically. Now, if you were doing traditional polygonal modeling and trying to Boolean subtract like a curved shape from a flat surface, you end up with all kinds of weird geometry. And you'll notice if you've ever struggled with hard surface modeling before, but check this out. So notice here, JSDF primitives, rounded cylinder SDF, and then 
they'll move it out of this curved surface. But then a really important thing here is that they can modify parameters to change how the transition blends between them. So this is a really freeform way of modeling and it's going to be extraordinarily powerful for hard surface design. So let's go through and take a look at Jay's Twitter account. Oh, you're following me. Very nice. I'll uh, just mosey on up here and give you a follow back. So John Kaza, okay, John's a lot easier for me to say. So scrolling down through the Twitter feed, we can see more demonstrations of the add-on in development. Now, from what I know, it's not available yet, but it will be available at the end of spring, beginning of summer time, from what I've read. But keeping an eye on their Twitter feed is great because we can see just like some of the really high quality results here, the tool in action. They've coined it Conja SDF, so that'll be the name of the tool. I think this is going to be one that's definitely worth keeping an eye on. I don't know if it's going to be a free or a paid add-on in the end. It's up to the developer how they want to present it on different storefronts, but of course, you know, Blender add-ons are GPL. And this has been picking up so much attention that the 80 level publication has also done a post about it. Let's just take a look now. Contra SDF has a proper UI now, custom modifiers tag with per primitive settings and reordering. Everything will work in progress. Nothing is final, of course. Let's take a look. So there'll be a way to kind of modify the order of calculation here. That's very cool. I can't wait to play around with this. I'm sure this is something that Emiliano will probably end up playing with. Actually, let's take a look. What's their most recent thing? Oh yeah, SDF volume nodes with geometry nodes. That's it. So they've already been playing with this SDF method. It's extremely powerful. There's actually quite a lot to talk about in terms of like these methods. So maybe I'll go back into another video about other methods for modeling in Blender. Basically, the future's bright. I think that we may see some like fundamental shifts in the feature sets available. Okay, so taking a look at another impressive project, something that picked up a lot of attention recently was this 14 year old artist that goes by the username Lego Me, the OG, recreated one of the new Across the Spider-Verse trailers entirely in Lego. Now, the thing that really struck people about it is that the quality and how well it matches the original trailer is really impressive. The rendering quality, the animation, the comp done afterwards, it's like, it's really funny, really well done, and I think really impressive for a 14 year old. Now, I'm not going to play all of the original video because that might not really be fair, you know, if you want to see the whole thing, go and watch it on their channel. But this has been interesting for me because I wasn't really aware of like the uh, the Lego community subset of the Blender community. It's been interesting to learn about. Damn, even in 4K as well, this must have taken a while to render. Taking a look in the description of the video on YouTube, we can see that there are some additional credits. So a couple of other people helped with the sets. It looks like these are also kind of Lego focused artists, 15 years old and another 14 year old. Very interesting. Must be like a group of friends with a lot of really cool 3D skills and some additional help with compositing and a print. So in terms of popularity, man, take a look at this. At the time of recording, 18.3 million views on Twitter, nearly 200,000 likes. I'm sure there are some studio executives taking a look at this thinking, huh, maybe we should do a Spider-Man Lego movie. After all, the Lego movies have done extremely popular in the past and the games as well for that matter. But yes, of course, it was done with Blender. So that's why I wanted to emphasize it here. A fantastic use of the software. Damn, time is ticking on. I've still got more things to share. All right, let's do this a little bit quickly. Over on the CG Boost channel, we have a new video by Jim Morin, who's an artist and instructor, about how to animate your 3D characters fast. So if you're looking for quick ways to get your characters up and going with animation, then this half an hour video will give you a quick rundown. Now, I really like the approach that CG Boost are taking with 3D artwork recently. They've been running a challenge based around the cubic world's principle. I call it a principle, it's more like a style, where you're supposed to create an animation representing a piece of media, like a favorite scene from your favorite film or video game. Uh, but the thing I like about it is it's all very cubic. And I think this is a really good way to teach yourself about composition and the balance of large, medium and small shape distribution in your artwork, how to make things visually pleasing. Because by sticking to a cubic style, you don't need to necessarily worry about the complexities of detailed polygonal modeling. It's also a very easy way to create character concepts. So what I'm trying to say is that even if you're brand new to 3D artwork and you don't know how to make characters properly, this is still going to be a good tutorial for you because it's centered around these simplistic character designs and how to get them ready and moving. So there's actually a lot that's covered in this. It is half an hour long. Importing animation and creating a transfer rig, baking animation down, modifying the transfer rig, how to interact with holdable objects so they stick with the character, creating variations in the animation, centering mocap animation using the NLA editor, modifying NLA strips, and more. So thank you, Jim, for this video. Thank you, CG Boost, for the courses as well. I think this is going to be a great resource because I know a lot of you out there have trouble with animation content. I know I do as well, so I probably need to give this a good study. So another project I just want to give a quick shout out to is the light painter add-on available for free on github now this comes from spencer magnuson let me just check did i say the name right yes i think i did spencer magnuson so light painter is all about being able to freeform draw light onto your scene i believe they sent me a message a while ago about liking one of my old tutorials about painting with light this is something i really like again new expressive ways to control light in blender is something i'm very interested in so maybe if you are as well you might want to try this add-on out essentially the way it works is using the annotation tool you can draw over surfaces where you want light to essentially express itself onto the surface 
this and it will figure out how to do that. It looks like there's also a Pi menu for adding different types of light to your scene and also operators to help control the sun lamp and sky textures. Moving on, Gleb, who I keep recommending in every community roundup now because he just keeps producing cool content, has added a couple of tutorials for image projection in Blender. So image-based lighting. Again, I love lighting. I love seeing all these different techniques. There's a lot of power in image-based lighting, especially considering that we can control these images with nodes. A lot of people don't actually know that, that you can control light sources with nodes in Blender. I have actually done a tutorial about that in the past. We kind of simulated core sticks a little bit and did some kind of like wormhole tunnel thing. There are lots of really funky methods for controlling the emission of light in cycles. So Gleb is kind of exploring this in his part one and part two tutorials here. So if you want to master the art of light and photon control for the sake of fancy artistic renders, then it's worth checking out. And of course, this goes hand in hand with Gleb's cinematic lighting course, which I do think is worth the price. Okay, what else have we got? A couple more things. So if you want to create detailed terrains in Blender in a free way from low poly meshes, then we have the free auto terrainer tool. Let's take a little look at the Gumroad page. So it's pretty cool here. You can just take like simple low poly meshes, modify them, and it will try and automatically generate a terrain based on information about the mesh. Obviously, that's quite exciting. I think you'll find it useful. The automatic Blender terrain generator is a powerful and easy to use tool that lets you turn any low poly mesh into realistic and customizable terrain. Use it to create mountains, valleys, islands, deserts, forests, and more. You can adjust the results with simple sliders and inputs. Now, keep in mind, the automatic Blender terrain generator is not a magical preset for all your terrain needs, but it's a node group that you are encouraged to modify and customize for your own needs. Excellent. And let's take a little look at some of the render results here. I think it's great, you know, as a start as well. Very exciting. Thinking back, I've done kind of similar procedural things a few years ago, kind of like with the modifier stack alone. And just thinking now with like all the possibilities available with geometry nodes, like there's a lot of room to play around with things. When we finally get back around to the Biogen project, I bet there's going to be all sorts of weird black magic stuff coming out of that department. Thank you very much for sharing this, Samuel. Hopefully we get you some extra downloads. And from the look of it, the tool is free, but it does also have a five plus dollar version with a customized desert biome. Now, one thing I will say about um, having different priced versions of things on Gumroad is that from my understanding, if someone leaves a review on the free version, it will place it on the ratings, even though there's a paid version. So basically it doesn't separate the ratings. So sometimes there'll be assholes out there that leave low ratings on a free version and then other people come along and think it represents the paid version. So don't be an asshole. If you're not satisfied with a free version, you don't need to leave a bad rating. Just move yourself elsewhere. Okay, before we close up, I just want to say I've invested some time in having conversations with different creators in the Blender community recently over on my second channel. Channel. This is just kind of like low stakes, general discussion content. If you're working in Blender and you just need something to listen to, to drown out the silence, then you might find some of this interesting. So recently I spoke to Cartesian Caramel, who's been doing a lot of stuff with simulation nodes recently. A friend of mine, Donna Designs in 3D, who's done a lot of 3D scanning. We've got Grant Abbott, you probably know him as another Blender YouTuber. And also recently Joshua Canalba, who was my co-creator for the Blendstream project, who's also recently created a new machine learning powered website called Duet PBR, which helps you find CC0 so freely available materials or textures that you can use for any of your projects just by a description. Actually, maybe I'll show you that quickly before we close up. So Joshua actually gave me a preview of this website before it went live. So if I type in something like tiles and search, it's going to give me like tiled materials from different CC0 websites. And the website I come from will be represented by the icon. So obviously a lot of them are going to come from the same place. But here's the interesting thing. If you like a certain type of material, you can press find similar and then it will try to isolate similar materials. So if you want to refine your search, you can do that. So say I like bricks like this, I can click find similar and it's going to isolate more brick like materials. So this is the more machine learning part of the process. Say I want some darker brick materials, I'll click find similar on this and then we end up with a darker selection. Now let's say I like this one over here, I can click on it, it says it's from Polyhaven and then it will take us straight to the Polyhaven website. So it's a really cool way of indexing these freely available materials. So if you've ever wondered if a free material exists for something you want to make, then Duet PBR is your friend. And I will say, if any security software you have flags this up as a risky website, like as a Trojan, it's a false positive because we've done some weird testing with this. And for some reason, Malwarebytes, which I use, flags it up even though it's a perfectly fine website. I'm just letting you know that happens sometimes. It's basically, again, just a ML enhanced index for freely available materials elsewhere on the internet. Cool. okay, so that might be a long episode. Um, again, hopefully that's given you a bunch of stuff to check out. If you enjoy content like this, then please consider subscribing. It really helps, especially ringing that notification bell 
well and setting it to all. You can also sign up to my Patreon. I've been making some changes to that recently. I'm going to start giving some of my long-term patrons handwritten thank you notes in these lovely black and gold lined envelopes. Because I've set up a PO box recently. I'm looking to uh, start doing some physical products and gifts. So if you want to come join the party, you can. You'll get access to an exclusive Discord channel and your name will be kept permanently on the website. If you made it this far through the video, well done. You're amazing. Consider putting an emoji in the comments so I can see if you did make it this far. And the emoji I want you to put in this time is... What should we do? There's been such a variety of content. I know what to do. Since there was the Lego project by Lego Me, the OG, amazingly talented 14 year old, put a brick emoji in the comments. And then tell me what your favorite project was or tell me what you've been doing recently because I like to stay updated. So yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.